Welcome okay. back. It is still the Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Well, it's time for us to take you through the pages of the National Dailies. So we call it Off the Press, and we have Chris Kane in Wendu, who joins the conversation in no time. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper, and uh, the attention will be on the top stories, the banner and board caption right here. Now, looking at the first, this talks about after President Muhammad Buhari's order, security agents go after all illegal refineries. That is very interesting. And 2023 presidency. Citing fairness, Southern Middle Belt leaders make case for Southeast. Uh, so it's just going to be a lot for us, but we hope that Chris shares his thoughts as we proceed. Go and put your house in order, Fanny Ferry tells Igbo politicians. Northern stakeholders won against uh, petting north against south. Uh, that's also underneath the board caption. And just before we move away, Nigerian courts awards one billion naira against truck owner for blocking highway. Abba Kiari and DLEA arrest drug baron behind three billion naira tramadol deal. And you have reps postpone re resumption of plenary uh, for whatever reason. That's also making uh, the bold caption this morning. And you have world reaches man, Elon Musk buys Twitter for 400, I mean, $44 billion. Elon Musk buys Twitter for $44 billion. I mean, it was just a conversation we had at Top Trending this morning. Police officer kills two injures orders at Lagos party. Very sad uh, headline right here, but that's the much we can take this morning on the leadership. Away from the leadership newspaper, we'll slide on next to the Punch newspaper. And the main story this morning, Electoral Act, Amichi Ngege orders a risk disqualification over a failure to resign. Whatever writers there, we will disqualify them at screening if they fail to resign party chieftain. Uh, APC summits or submits registered to INEC ahead of deadline, commences sale of forms today. Rolling party awaits court judgment on controversy or controversial section, uh, fails to refund aspirants. Above the masthead, federal government uh, shortlists uh, bidders for Lagos, Badagri, Semel, Lagos, Abeokuta, 10 other highways. All right, presidency is saying a uh, group, um, the first as Ohanese, Adibanjo, one Jonathan. Okay, they're talking about the presidency. A uh, group, the first as Ohanese, Adibanjo, one Jonathan, blame military, not Kuka, for to Kano's delay, uh, Northern Elders Forum. You know, they are quoted on that one. Manufacturers borrow 1.03 trillion naira from banks, debts uh, heat 4.2 trillion naira. Okay, Kiari, drug baron with 103 bank accounts nabbed at Lagos Airport, Ondo lawmaker fumes as par cable kills four plain children. Sexual act. Chrisland, 10-year-old people, delete social media videos, apologizes. All right, let's see if we can take one or two more. A laughing, contenders begin applications, submission after eight days. Nigeria's MSMEs dropped by two million naira, or by two million rather, in four years. That's according to Smedin. Uh, those are the bulk of the stories you can find on the Punch newspaper this morning. All right, let's take a look at the Delhi Independent newspaper this morning. 2023 presidential election. I will betray Nigerians if I don't contest. A Vice President Yemi Osibajo uh, is quoted to say uh, on this. Okay, very interesting. NDLEA arrests suspects behind three billion naira illicit drug linked to Abakari, uh, Abakari's team. Federal government concession, 42.74 billion naira or billion metric tons of bitumen. That's what you also find about caption, PDP women plot winning strategy ahead of 2023 elections. And Pencon reviews regulation on retirement and terminal benefits. 
Elon Musk strikes as $44 billion deal to buy Twitter. Telecom sector's GDP growth rate faces a decline. And that's also another board head of their PDP. Northern stakeholders reject Saraki Mohammed as consensus presidential aspirant. Nandi Kanu sues Chief George and register over secret trial. These are the headlines on the Daily Independent. All right, away from that one, let's check out the Nation newspaper. All right, PDP ex governors aspirants reject consensus candidate uh, Obi Ngege Umai Anyem rally ethnic nationalities for Southeast presidential bid. Igbo leaders deny Wike Amechi. A reverse governor donates 200 million naira in Kaduna State. All right, APC begins sale of farms in Abuja and state. Three directors fired. All right, uh, suspects uh, in OAU students' uh, death slums in court. World richest man Elon Musk buys Twitter for $44 billion. A laughing body buried according to tradition, says Oyo High Chief. Uh, these are all of the stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper this morning. All right, let's have Chris Kende when you join the conversation this morning. Yeah, once again. All right, good morning. Uh, let's take a look at the leadership. It talks about uh, the 2023 presidency, and uh, the argument has been citing fairness. Southern Middle Belt leaders make case for the Southeast. The case is that if you look at the, you know, the conversation has been that it's a gentleman agreement. And so the Southeast is saying it has to be fair if we're looking at this agreement over time. Uh, what are your thoughts? I, do, uh, I totally agree uh, with all fairness, equity and fairness. Uh, I think um, without any doubt, the South is the political zone um, is uh, well granted um, for the presidency in 2023. And don't forget the fact that practically all, um, all parts of the country um, have, have a test of the earth since 1999. In 1999, it was the Southwest uh, with Olusegun After Olusegun Basanjo, he moved to the North, uh, as it were. Um, then the South South also got it uh, when Yaragua died. Um, with Lord Jonathan took over after Lord Jonathan, um, the the north um, through uh, Muhammad Buhari uh, is in, in the south. Of, don't forget that it's, uh, Nigeria is more like a uh, city of uh, three port, um, and um, you, you know normally normally you say it's, um, the north, which is normally we call Hausa, the west we call. Um, the Yorubas and the, the East, South is called the Yorubas. But as it is presently, it's obvious that uh, without any doubt that, yes, the South East deserve the presidency. And as I've always said, the presidency is not just putting on a la carte. It's not something that you are sat at the table just for the fun of it. You have to work hard for it. If, even as a region, you have to get the, the kind of support from other parts of the country. You have to be able to convince the other parts of the country on why you should be uh, voted for. Not just because you think you're an evil man and you just sit back and feel that the president should be just um, given to you. So the Igbo uh, Southeast contestants should try to reach out to their uh, brothers and sisters in other parts of the country, in the Southwest, in the North Central, in the Northeast, in the Northwest, even the South South, so that they can be able to convince them on the need for them to be given the opportunity to be the president of Nigeria. So, Chris, then also, Chris I, Kade uh, Wandu, yeah, uh, um, um, let's yeah. just, you know, cut it in a bit here. So, so we understand that the issue of zoning rotation of the presidency is, is an agreement, is an arrangement that's been going on for a while. And it might not have any constitutional backing. But that's what happened. And that's practically to some point because you have political parties projecting all of that. So when you say that the Igbo man or, you know, a candidate from the Southeast should go about lobbying, in what capacity should there be lobbying? Should the parties 
involved now, the different political parties that we have not understand or not imbibe that, should, should they be allowed to just take a stroll within the party structure to, be, to go begin to lobby with their you know, counterparts in the different parts of the country? The politics is about lobbying. Politics is about lobbying. You have to lobby. No, no. I'm, I'm, my, my question here is, should it not be a constant for the political parties to understand yeah. that, you know, it has to go to the South East? At what point do you have, um, you know, this candidate, especially like you have mentioned, the South East going yeah. about lobbying? Lobbying to who? Lobbying with who? And you, said, you said that it is not constitutional. Um, but let me go to correct that a little bit. In the constitution of the BDP, I think, there is this issue of zoning that uh, is enshrined in their constitution. But that was not cast on stone. And, and when I say lobbying, I mean in politics, even for any part of this country, even, as a, even if you are contesting in your own local government, even if you are contesting as um, a, a, a councillor in your local government, you still have to lobby people. You have to lobby people. You have to talk to people. You have to make sure that people vote for you. You have to canvass. Don't forget, you are not the only candidate. So lobbying is part of politics. So what I'm saying in essence is that there is the need to be able to use, to reach out to other parts. And that is what you've seen they've been doing. Most of them have been moving around, going to all parts of the country. You've seen Peter Obi uh, in the north. You saw him in, I think it was in Akura or Ikiti some few days ago. You saw uh, Payo Sanyim also moving around. He has been to the west. He has been to the north. He has been to the south, south. And you saw some other um, politicians from that. So that is what I'm talking about. But we are also talking about, even before, even within, the, uh, the, the, the party itself, there's what is called consultation. That is why you hear them say, oh, I want, I, I'm consulting. Remember when Ashwaju said he was going to contest, he said he was consulting. Atiku said he was contesting, he said he was consulting. Peter B said he was contesting, he's contesting, he, was, he, he, he said he's consulting. So that, is, that consultation is part of lobby. You'll be able to, be able to lobby people, go within and outside your uh, political party. That is what political, uh, politics is all about. So. When I say that you have to love me, it is not a shrine. The fact that you think that you are the best candidate does not necessarily mean that the party will give you the ticket. You have to do the need you have to do some convincing. And in the course of doing that, then you have to convince. Don't forget that primaries is a, is, is a political, is a political uh, and stuff. It is within the political parties to be able to do that. But even at that, there are some people that are not even the political parties that also determines some of the things that happen in the political parties. To be short, how powerful some certain traditional rulers, some retired generals, some retired politicians, and uh, when it comes to the issue of politics. So that is the, how it rules. All right, uh, let's uh, check out um, some other papers. Uh, let's look at uh, the nation uh, newspaper, if we would. Uh, the main, uh, uh, the lead story that is uh, PDP ex-governors aspirants reject consensus uh, candidate uh, that several writers, Obi Ngege Omai and Imrali ethnic nationalities for Southeast presidential bid. Uh, Igbo leaders in Iwiki Amechi, Rivers governor donate. Okay, but let's talk about the issue of uh, consensus candidate uh, or candidacy. And um, a lot, whole lot of people believe that it may mar the PDP some chances ahead of 2023 if they actually look in that particular direction. What are your thoughts, really? Politics is a dynamic uh, game, as, as, as it is, and uh, it is only, it's, you never say never until it's over. Um, let's start with, the, you are talking about PDP. Don't forget that the some northern candidates, about um, four of them, came together and said that I'm um, moving around the country uh, in order to be able to uh, come up with a consensus candidate among themselves. You are talking of Saraki, you are talking of Allah Mohammed, you are talking of... Um, uh, Tam, um, Governor Tambua and uh, one, of, one other candidate, and they moved around. At the end of it all, certain elements within the uh, Northern Elders Forum, um, specifically, uh, I think the chairman, came up with two names and said that that is um, what they are, the people that they've chosen and um, they're supporting for. They're talking about Saraki and Bala Mohammed. Immediately, that name came out. So many, uh, um, uh, so many people from the North. The that even within the, the that uh, elders forum, I remember that the secretary of that forum also uh, came out to say that they are not part of it. That is just the personal opinion of uh, um, the, the leader of, of, of that forum. 
Then you also say uh, someone like a governor Tambua of Sokoto State say that he is not part of that. That there was never a time that such. Uh, so it is always a uh, politics, as I said, is dynamic. There will not be trade horses, what you call trade horses, in the At the end of it all, I personally, I if you ask me, I will say that every one of them should go into the field, irrespective. When you say consensus, it also helps in this the franchising some people from um, testing their popularity. I rather say that every one of them should go to the field and let the best candidate within the uh, within the ranks. Uh, because but that in itself does not foreclose the fact that certain elements or certain things come to play. They're not agreeing up. PDP has not come out specifically to say whether their presidential ticket will be soon. Don't forget there was a committee that was set up by the PDP headed by Governor Autumn of Benue State, which came out with a report. And that report was handed over to the neck of uh, PDP. We are expecting that the, the neck would have come out by now to state his stand on that. That, although the statement that report, that was written as reported in the media, was that they are throwing it open. But Governor Autumn came uh, out to say that, well, let us not uh, jump the gun and let the neck. I don't know when the neck of um, the, the PDP is going to come out with. Uh, uh, with their zoning area, whether it's going to be zoning, whether it's going to be open or the rest of them. But you can see that everybody is campaigning. Those from the north and the south are campaigning for the presidency. So if 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 the PCB doesn't zone it only by that means everybody is going to the field. For the APC, I think it's a bit much easier because it seems and uh, the way it looks that APC already has zoned his uh, presidential ticket to the south. So it's between those of the south to this determine whether it's going to the south south, whether it's going to the south east, or it's going to the south west. But uh, in the next few days, uh, we will know how this will come out. Don't forget that the primary is going to come up within the next one month or the other. And by then, we would have known the candidates of the political parties. All right. Um, so, Chris, let's take a look at the Daily Independent as well this morning. And quickly on that, he talks about the issue of betrayal. Uh, the vice president is saying that he will betray Nigerians if he doesn't contest uh, you know, for the position of the president? Well, the, pre the vice president will not betray me. I'm in Nigeria. So I don't know those are going to betray. Because personally, uh, if I'm to judge the vice president with, um, with what the government, he, which is part of, um, which is his, the, the vice president, has achieved in the past seven years, then that is a, a, a business failure completely. If I'm going to start, start this government, by his promises in 2015 and 2019, I will score them less than 35%. That to me is total failure. So, um, but when he says, but if you last want to judge him as an individual, well, there's a report that's what is called collective responsibility. So he cannot um, detach himself from whatever has happened in the, next, in the past seven years. But it is his right, the question we always ask is, does he have the right to contest? Of course he does. Is he eminently qualified to contest? Of course, he's eminently qualified. But the issue of betrayal, I don't know where it's coming from. And who knows that will be betrayed? Personally, I will not be betrayed to whether he's contesting or not. What we need now is those that have the capacity and not be able to go back to Egypt as it were. Because in the last seven years, Nigerians have not found it rousing at all. All the promises made were, were not fulfilled. Um, from what was the first um, one in 20, I can't remember. Uh, then the next, they take us to, they said they are taking us to the next level in 2019. We can see the level we are, whether the next level was to the top or to the bottom, it's left for the Nigerians to see. All right, uh, CK, and uh, let's uh, look at um, all the stories. Uh, on the Punch uh, newspaper, it's as though um, section um, 84, subsection 12, is still actually generating uh, mixed reactions um, from Nigerians. And um, Amechi Ngege orders a risk disqualif uh, disqualification over failure to resign. There are several writers to that story. We will disqualify them at screening if they fail to resign. A party, chief a party chieftain is quoted on that. Now, so let's talk about um, this uh, Amechi Ngege and others risking disqualification as a result uh, of them not resigning from their uh, positions right now. How do you uh, react to all of this? I think the political parties are just being, uh, trying to be smart, and to me, which is a good one. Because, yes, in as much as a high court in uh, Umaria uh, um, um, gave a judgment that that session of the electoral act should be expunged, and um, the, the AGF at the point was almost doing that, but the National Assembly said they are going to go and appeal, which I think they have done. 
And the, the risk here is that if they don't resign, as stated by the electoral act, despite the uh, ruling of the High Court in Umuahia, and the Court of Appeal or the Supreme Court eventually um, gave a judgment in favor of the electoral act, what that means is that anybody that came up or, um, that was elected or selected through the primaries and rest of them may not be able to maybe disqualify at the election. That in itself is a huge risk for any polit political party to take. And some of the governors are already doing the right thing because that most of them have been asked the aid and uh, political appointees who are interested in contesting any of the position in 2023 to resign now. That is the best thing to do. So for me, the political parties are doing the right thing. It is right, the Electoral Act has been passed into law, despite whatever a, a court has said for now. But it is not over until it's over. It's just a high court in Abuja, in, 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 in Umaya. We are still going to have this getting to the Supreme Court. So the wise thing for anybody to do is for them to be able to, the political party to ask whoever is going to contest to resign. And for me, that is the only good thing. If you are going to uh, contest for election, why would you still want to hold on to a, a political a, a position as a political appointee? So um, I, I, think, I think they should do the need for But if they want to take the risk, all well and good, uh, let them take the risk. If you are going to pay 100 million, to get a nomination form for me as a presidential candidate. And at the end of it, you come to realize that the court has passed a judgment that you cannot contest. There goes your 100, 100 million or 40 million, as it is case with um, a, PT, a PDP and other positions. All right, uh, let's also look at it. I mean, it's uh, a conversation that's generating uh, a lot of reactions. But before then, uh, we look at the issue of telecom sector and their GDP growth rate facing a decline. Do you also think that uh, with the federal government giving the injunction uh, that you know 72 million subscribers should be banned from making outgoing calls or have been banned from making outgoing calls have also contributed to you know the decline of growth that telecom sectors are faced with? Of course it does because um, but we have to look at the issues holistically. We are talking of um, security here. The greatest problem facing Nigeria currently is not just the economy, but security. And the federal government is willing to think that they can be able to leave this in the world if all SIMs are registered. What I just believe that everybody should make sure that they are, these SIMs are registered. Yes, the telecom companies will be affected. But that is not going to be the only issue because also don't forget that um, the, 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 the telecom sector is also facing serious challenges. It has to do with the economy. And let me look at it from the simplest of uh, terms. If you know what it takes to generate power, most of them depends on the individual or uh, private uh, uh, generation of power. Each of those um, base stations have two generators each, most of them. And you can multiply that across Nigeria. If you have a steady power, then you realize that their overhead will be practically reduced. But they practically do, uh, depend on um, um, generating sets and the rest of them. That in itself is a, is a fact. Also look at the, 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 the Naira to the dollar. Most of the things that also the equipment they use are imported. And the more the, the dollar, uh, Naira produced against the dollar, that, is, that in itself is a, so a huge problem. So, put all this together, Coupled with about seven, uh, about how many, about 70 million um, 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 lines that have not been linked, then that is a threat. Uh, why this is happening? You can also see that as mass, massive growth across the uh, other the globe. Just yesterday, Elon Musk, as right as he said, do your uh, opening, bought over um, Twitter for about 44 billion dollars. That is huge. That is how huge the. Uh, uh, the market is, and if we can be able to do the much we can do and be able to assist this uh, uh, this sector, it will really help us. It will help our GDP and also help um, a, 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 a help out a certain problem we're having seriously in our foreign exchange. All right, uh, let's uh, talk more about um, the issue of uh, insecurity. Just on Sunday, the president who was in the news and he blamed, uh, you know, the bishop of um, Sankoto Dasis and other Nigerians, uh, you know, for the delay, uh, uh, delivery of uh, uh, the Tucano um, 
special uh, jets, but um, there is actually now um, a reaction uh, from the Northern Elders Forum, and they are saying that um, blame military, not KUKA for Tucano's delay. Do you agree with the NEF? That statement by the president is the most absorbed statement I've ever had in my life. You blame Father, uh, 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 Bishop Kuka for the delay in uh, um, getting the Tucano. And you are, I'm trying to say, which kind of power does uh, Father or Bishop Kuka have? We are immediately in the position of probably a president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And why haven't you said all this, said this all this well? Just because he, made a, 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 he gave a, a sermon, or he made a statement during the Easter uh, period and speaking the truth, what he has every to and look at every factor of every single statement, every single line of that statement he made. We are Nigerians, we know the truth, and we know that um, the clergy, uh, the clergy say the truth. But the government will always uh, try to um, bury his head like the ostrich, and try to uh, believe that all is well. Is it not in this country that a few weeks ago that the uh, uh, Minister of uh, Information told us that Nigeria is safer than, is safer, and we do this, the, the, there was an attack of a train between Abuja and Kaduna. And within that same period, over 106 Nigerians were buried in a mass grave in, in, uh, in Plateau State. That is just uh, one out of so many other killings all around. So I see no reason why the government, instead of looking at the message, are trying to look at the message. And because I've always asked that, must you react to everything? Must you react to everything? There is a, a, a communication, there is always a, a communication deficit within the presidency. And that I put on the laps of the president because it seems to see, it seems that his information managers don't even know what to say. They don't even know what to do at the right time. Instead of looking at what I've been saying, you are late, they say, first of all, is the, 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 the presidency blame uh, uh, for the uh, uh, cooker. Then also to blame some elements um, in the U.S. for that. That woman is absorbed. That is not that is not the true position of things. Let us look at the situation that everybody is worried with this insecurity situation there. And that is what should be worried the best. If also if we said that, that was, why was it why did he give a marching order to the service chief again to make sure that they leave this in the court? Why did he give the marching order? Several times he invited whatever that they can invite them to the villa, give them a marching order, and nothing happens. I think the president should be so worried about it. One of the reasons why he was elected into it was because he is a general of the army. He was he is a retired general. Most Nigerians did that. Nigeria will be more secure under him as a former military person. But what is happening now? Hmm. All right, just uh, before we move away from uh, the papers this morning, uh, there's a quick one on the Daily Independent. It talks about the PDP northern stakeholders rejecting Saraki Muhammad as consensus presidential aspirant. It feels like uh, we're just here to see a lot of drama unfold in these political parties ahead of the primaries. Yes, I think we've discussed that uh, um, because of this program. But uh, as I said, the, um, the, the candidates put forward um, by some leaders or elders within the North of course, it's not uh, acceptable to most of the other people in the north. When they started that journey, personally, I knew that it was a mission infertility. There is no way, there is no way they'll be able to come out with a consensus candidate within themselves. Who are you going to drop? Is it Tambora? Is it Bala Mohammed? Or uh, is it Saraki? Or is it um, the, the other guy, Hadatu or Hayatu? Or, I can't remember his name now. It is, it, 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 it is a, it is a mission infertility. Um, if you ask me personally, my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion, of all those four candidates, Tambora seems to me the most uh, broad-based um, candidate uh, within the rank of the four. But are you going to just say the, 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 the person of Atiku Abubakar, who is also from the North, somebody who contested the election in 2019 and gathered about, I think, about 11 million votes on their about, are you going to just say him and say, oh, is it is, uh, is that take back not from the north as well? That in itself, um, to me, is neither here nor there. The primary is coming. Let them go and pick up their forms. Let them go into the, put on their uh, uh, boxing gloves, go into the ring and smoke it out, and make the best candidate come. Out. But I will also repeat that for me, the best, this is the best time to give the people of the South East the opportunity um, to be able to uh, also produce the president. Uh, the president, most likely from the PDP, because since 1999, 
the South is more than any other geopolitical zone have pitched their tent with PDP. Go and check the records. Since 1999, it is the only political zone I know that has been so consistent. Okay, we also said this South South like And I think that um, there's need um, for them also to look at the at the South East for once and see whether they can also get the best. All well and good. Let everybody go to the ring. And then the best candidate um, come out. I hope they're able to come out with a candidate that can be able to square up to the APC country because it's a good opportunity for the PDP to win the election. Well, President Muhammad Buhari, who has been the arrowhead of the PDP, is not going to be in the ballot come 2023. So um, it, it, it is an open race when it comes to uh, the presidency. All right, thank you, Chris. All right, uh, we must say a very big thank you to Chris Kende Wando, chartered mediator and conciliator. Thanks for all the thoughts that you have shared on the Off the Press segment. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mahabi. Do have a nice day. All right, it's still the Breakfast and Lost TV Africa. We'll go back this day in history and see what happened, and we'll come back and have our first major conversation for the day. Do join us again. Come for